What is up, folks? Um, we are live with another episode of the Takeover Podcast, and this is like our special edition. Um, this is the mortgage factor. This is for a lot of you out there who are considering um, buying a home in the next year, two years, five years, ten years. We're not going out of business anytime soon. Um, actually, we're only increasing, and you're getting a lot of equity the sooner you buy. But um, this podcast is something where we bring you a lot of fire content with absolutely zero branding minus my boy jory over here with race robinson mid florida mortgages um, who's here with us today so a little backstory on jory we've actually known each other since before the real estate industry and this is one of this is actually one of my closest friends and i'm so fortunate to be able to work with him again which is amazing especially in this platform and uh so today we're going to be talking about the mortgage factor right so yep. jory welcome to the show thank you thank you for having me dan super excited yeah, so let's 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 dive right in. So you work Race Robinson. That's your. That's my stepdad. Okay, yeah. cool. So you guys have been here in the Conway area, actually, more than anything in the Orlando area for how long? Uh, so I've been involved with mortgages myself for about four years, uh, and Race has been in, involved in mortgages in Orlando as it's been growing for eighteen. That's pretty solid. I mean, yeah. So he's been through it all. He was through the last recession and the housing crisis. A hundred percent, man. He's literally seen the entire idea of real estate change from when it was like, hey, you have a job? Yeah, I have a job. Great. You get a house to now, you know, collecting all this documentation, learning absolutely every little thing about the clientele that we're working with. So I, I can tell you guys by personal experience, the difference between using somebody that you trust and know, like you guys, mm -hmm. um, versus kind of just fly by night people. You know, I, I've seen a lot of horror stories personally firsthand for my clients and for other people as well without, you know, really doing some research. So real quick, I, I want to give this story because it's my favorite one to tell. Yeah, Actually, man. we have like two of these. And so we'll start with the first one, which was a uh, last year, early last year mm -hmm. when um, a client decided to go with a different lender and we called you up and we we're like, we need to close this out. Like, what was it? 16 days is what we needed to do at the time. Mm -hmm. And you were able to get it done in 15, which was incredible with all the paperwork. But, um, you know, this, this, this last month and actually December. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a client who calls me up and believe it or not, guys, this happens. Uh, called me up on a Friday night at 8 15 PM. We were actually at our company Christmas party yep. and he calls me up and he says, Hey, um, so I just got denied for my loan. And this, this was Friday and we were supposed to close the following Monday. Mm -hmm. He was a relocation from up North and he had an 18 wheeler schedule with all his stuff to come in from Indiana. On yeah. Tuesday. And so the craziest part was that this, uh, this gentleman, a good friend of mine now, um, was like, what do we do? Like all my stuff's coming down. I can't change it, blah, blah, blah. I just got denied. And I was like, let me make a call real quick, even though it's a Friday night. And so I texted Jory. I didn't call him. I said, Hey, are you up? And he was like, yeah, what's up? And I told him the whole story. And I want you to tell the people how many days do we get clear to close for this for this house? So uh, Friday, a text message comes in late at night. Saturday, you and I both talk to clients. Sunday, I get application and documents. Monday, we submit the loan. And then seven days from so the following Monday, we get the clear to close. That's crazy. So for, and that included uh, underwriting it includes a whole brand new appraisal because remember, the former lender uh, would no longer provide the appraisal to oh, us, yeah, which was right. kind of weird. But we had to order a whole new appraisal. So for, and, um, and every I mean, everything was done within a full seven days. So from beginning to end, uh, clear to close was a seven day process. And in reality, I guess that you could say it was five days because lenders don't work on the weekends typically, Correct. right? Yeah. So seven days, seven actual full days, clear to close. This gentleman took care of it. And uh, we worked it out with the client. We got him in the house early and everything worked out mm -hmm. and it was beautiful. And, you know, uh, great friend, Paul, and he was fantastic and in, in getting the documents on time. Right. Yeah. So that's actually half the battle too, is getting the clients to, to get the documents in on time. Right? Oh, definitely, man. Definitely. So speaking of documents, let, let's give the people, you know, kind of some feedback, some stories and stuff. And actually Derek uh, Smith just hopped on and he says, you're the man, Jory. So oh, that's awesome. What's <laughs> Derek on, is Derek, joining brother. us. What's up, Derek? Uh, Derek is with uh, another brokerage in the area with Brad Young. And uh, we love them to death. We've actually done several deals together. And these, these guys are champs, uh, hands down. 100%, and, man. Uh, they are the best. We'll probably have them on the show not too long from now. And then, uh, yeah, he says, you're the you're the mortgage wizard. And I, I mean, that just proves it. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here telling an amazing story. And we got another... Uh, uh, agent in a different brokerage saying the exact same stuff. So let's let's kind of break it apart because this is the mortgage factor. So let's break it apart. What are the documents that you need for, let's say, an FHA loan? So like an FHA loan is what? Describe to us what an FHA loan is. Yeah. So a lot of times when you hear people being like when loans are broadcasted across like the nation when they're being advertised, a lot of people have like these first time home buyer programs. And a lot of the advertising is just like what most people hear, right? It's advertising. Yeah. But they don't ever describe what it is. So FHA loan is really going to be your first time home buyers program. 
it's uh it's the one of the lower down payments it's 3.5 percent of any purchase price it does it's very very uh i guess you could say accepting of all sorts of credit scores so we can go down to a 580 and so on so it, the lowest is a 580. okay but um with fha the, the the i guess you could say the great thing about it is it's I, I, it's just it's so easy to do i mean you have low down payment the credit scores are open a lot of the guidelines are very open uh to not necessarily i wouldn't say nearly interpretation but it's a lot more gracious upon the, the buyer i mean you can receive gifts a uh, hundred percent of your down payment can be a gift a hundred percent of the down payment and the closing cost can be a gift it's really phenomenal so so you're saying that we for the buyer obviously mm -hmm. um they need up to or, or i'm sorry uh, as as low as a 580 credit score mm -hmm. and then they can get a hundred percent of their down payment and closing costs as a gift correct and they can buy a home like that yeah so say i'm a college kid fresh out of college and i went to ucf and i want to stay in the area mm -hmm. um and my parents you know wanted to give me a college gift instead of asking for a corvette i should be asking for a down payment and closing costs 100 percent. yeah so yeah. that makes sense because then i would go ahead and, and turn i would rent out my rooms and make a profit on that house yeah no you wouldn't even, yeah exactly you, you wouldn't even pay for your own mortgage your, your buddies would that's crazy so fha is the way to go um it, you know, it seems like for for first time home buyers, but let's talk about the differences between FHA and conventional because I, I feel like a lot of people get confused on what the differences are between the two. 100%. So give me give me the differences in the breakdown between an FHA and a conventional loan. Yeah, of course. So um, we'll just start off with FHA just because that's what we began with. So FHA, like I said, reiterating the three point five percent down of the purchase mm -hmm. price, um, you you're going to get, uh, so there's also the stuff called mortgage insurance, mm -hmm. right? So the difference between on FHA, you're going to have mortgage insurance that is geared based off of the loan size. Got it. Um, mortgage insurance is going to be on the loan forever, right? So you're never going to get rid of it unless you either pay off the mortgage, mm -hmm. you sell the property or you refinance into con to conventional. Okay. Most people, and you could probably tell me a little bit better is the average first time home buyer staying in their house between three to seven, seven. Yeah, yeah, three to seven years. So, mm -hmm. If you were to buy conventional anyways, you're not gonna get your mortgage insurance off until about seven years anyways, if you Correct. just pay the normal. So mortgage insurance on the life for the on the life of the loan. But one of the best factors about FHA is it has ridiculously low rates. Like right now, with a client that I have, it's he's in the mid sixes. Okay. Um his his rate right now is a three point two five oh. Three wait, three point two five oh. Yes, three it to three point two five oh. It's remarkable. He's not paying a dime for it. There's That's no a full point lower than what my mortgage is. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, the, the rates, I, you know, thankfully the rate and the rates are in our favor right yeah. now, but on top of it, I mean, those are just like ridiculously low rates and it's, that comes with the FHA program. Got it. Um, the one thing, so let's switch over to conventional, right? Okay. So conventional is a little bit, uh, it, mainly you're going to find more, um, of a 5% down, but it does have two programs that allow 3% down. It is okay. very those programs are a little bit more strict with higher credit scores requirements. And actually you have to have a, you, you cannot make over a certain uh, amount of income, but okay. let's just stick to the normal one. Um, the normal conventional loan, you can, it's 5% down. Mm -hmm. Interest rates are going to be a little bit higher. You're typically seeing high threes, low fours right now. And it does have mortgage insurance if you put less than 20% down. Got it. So, but with that being said, the mortgage insurance and interest rates are based off of credit score. Mm -hmm. So when I have an applicant or when we have somebody that's coming in, say you refer me somebody, we're going to analyze what their credit score is and kind of their entire, I guess you want to say portfolio. Mm -hmm. And I will never steer someone in any direction. If they want to go conventional, they can go conventional. They want to go FHA, they can go FHA. But I will give them my professional opinion of which of one may be better suited for them. Um, with conventional, uh, you don't, you, the mortgage insurance, like I said, it's, it's, if you have put 20% down, you're not going to get it. But after the, the benefit of the conventional is over time, you stay in the house over the seven years or you make larger payments than mm -hmm. what is necessary. Once you achieve that 20% equity, you can go back to the bank and say, Hey, listen, man, I got 20%. I've done things to the property. My value has gone up. I've paid down faster take my PMI away. Got it. There's a couple of things that they have to do to va validate that, but mm -hmm. they will remove it. And therefore your payment actually goes lower than nice. what it was when you first got the loan. So it seems to me that pro probably the way to go, if you're, if you've never bought a home before is, is FHA, because either way, unless you're putting 20% down, 
you're, you're still going to have the PMI, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's, that's hundred percent correct. And then, I mean, if, if in five to seven years, you know, I really want to get rid of it, I can just see the refinance, right? And yeah. You, guys. you can do the refinance. You can, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of things that you guys can do. So basically the breakdown between FHA and conventional is going to be that FHA has easier guidelines, right? Mm -hmm. And then it has a lower interest rate right now. Mm -hmm. And then hundred percent of my down payment and my closing costs can be a gift from family members. hundred percent. That's incredible. And so for conventional, we can do as little as 3%, depending on the factors, obviously it's going to be credit and, and, yeah. and debt to income ratio. So um, I want to, I want to stress here with um, everybody who's watching, anybody who might be considering buying this year is that, um, you know, the biggest fear and the biggest question I always get is what is the minimum down payment I need to put, right? And sometimes yep. people will think it's like, they're like, oh, I don't have 40, 50, 60, 80 K to put down because mm -hmm. in their heads, they built up this, this notion that um, they got to put down 10 or 20%. Mm -hmm. And that's clearly not the case. You know, we can do as little as this 3% if, if, if the shoe fits, right? A hundred percent. Yeah, man. I mean, there's, there's other ways that you can get out of it too. I mean, there's, there's been times that I've done mortgages where the client really only has the, the down payment, right? So we go FHA, they really only have 3.5%. Um, and there's things that you can do with the interest rate. Say that they have a really good credit score mm -hmm. and they only have the 3.5%. This guy that I'm right, working right now, 3.250 let's say he doesn't have the extra money for the closing costs. You can actually bump up your interest rate. Yeah, you're gonna be paying a little bit more, but mm -hmm. if you don't have the funds to be able to buy, the, if you don't have all the funds to be able to purchase the house and you actually kind of build those closing costs into the interest rate by bumping up the interest rate, that's less money out of your pocket up front and up front and you can act, and you know you're going to be able to afford the the monthly payment by let's just say 50 60 bucks a mo more per month yeah. and why not right so you're building in your closing costs and down well not your down payment but your closing your costs closing cost, yeah. into it so that's a great way to save it because i mean we're seeing closing costs anywhere between three and seven K depending mm -hmm. on the house, new construction, even higher. Right. Yep. So that's a great way to do it. I mean, like I said, your, you know, your client's doing 3.250 and I've got 4.250. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, to make that difference of not having to take care of your closing costs up front, maybe you don't want to flush out your bank account, right? You don't want to, you don't want to stress yourself and put yourself too thin, or maybe you wanted to renovate the kitchen. Like we've been <laughs> trying to, uh, that's a joke between Jory and I, we've been, uh, my wife and I have been working on trying to renovate the kitchen for like a year, literally. Um, but we probably should have done something similar to that to go ahead and get that taken care of by somebody else. But um, no, but the biggest thing I want to stress here is, is that, you know, either way, we're going to guide them through the process, right? That's how it works. That's, that's how our jobs work. And so that's that's something to to really keep in mind is that we're never going to steer you clear. Actually, I've had you on, on, on one occasion. Um, a client was pre-approved somewhere else uh, for like an astronomical deal. And it's it's like a once in a blue moon kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And I literally hit you up because he was like, find me the best rate. And I was like, well, I'm going to I'm gonna hit up Jory for sure. And I hit you up and you were like, honestly, I hate to say this, but I'm going to be honest, no one's going to beat that rate. Yeah. And so that's the kind of honesty I like to I like to stress to everybody because you got to make sure that you're very clear up front with your, with your lender or whoever it is that you're working with because you got to make sure that they're working in your corner in the best interest because this 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 can be a very scary and trying time. I and mean, this is one of the biggest purchases you guys would ever make, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's just like bringing your your. I'd like to give analogies of like uh, like landing an airplane, right? Like when you get on the airplane, you expect the pilot to land. Like you don't get on, you're like, well, fingers crossed, yeah. right? Like <laughs> like the same thing with your your loan officer or like with your real estate agent. Like you you need to you have to have that honest, then you have to have that open communication because like yeah. it's expected for us to be able to give them all the information. And unfortunately, sometimes that just doesn't happen with other you know, other groups, but yeah, yeah. So one thing I want to say with that is that also, um, I, I will stress that you as, uh, as the home buyer, um, whoever's watching this kind of needs to really reach out to your lender. What, qu what kind of questions should they be asking? Because I'll, I'll be honest when I went and got mine, I, I, you know, I didn't know you were in mortgages then. And so I actually went with somebody else. Um, but I didn't ask them anything. As soon as he told me what I was approved for, I was like, let's go shopping. I didn't know what my PMI was. I didn't know what my interest rate was. I kind of just threw it all to the wind and said, let's, let's hope if it's, let's, let's see if it sticks. Right. Yeah. So what kind of questions should they be asking you? You and what kind of documents should they expect to be bringing to the table, right? Of course, of course. That's a that's a great question. So, as a home buyer, I think the one of the biggest things everyone always wants to know about the interest rate. Everyone wants to know about mm -hmm. what their out of pocket is, and of course, as a loan officer, if good a loan officer, you should be able to be explain exactly what that would look like. Yeah. But the big questions are: is you want to know exactly what your process is going to look like and learn about the process with your loan officer. Got it. Um, so you know we're in a day and age that everything is so online. You could look me up on Zillow. You can look me up on Google. You mm -hmm. can see what other people say about it, Correct. but you want to know the person and how they're going to be able to handle things. So like 
example would be if I, I'm a commission-based uh, employee, right? So I make commission off of any deal. And if you're a home buyer that's making commission, how does that affect you in the process? Mm -hmm. You know, how long have you been commissioned? What what type? How am I able to buy? What kind of hiccups can happen in the process? You want to learn about your file in general instead of worrying about. And of course, like I said, interest rate and all that stuff does mm -hmm. matter. Yeah. But you want to learn about your file because a lot of people, and what seems to happen, like our good friend Paul, is that someone was just like yes 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 and they didn't ask the big questions nor did they bring it up and then right. at the very end what happens dilemma problem, dilemma, problem. Yeah. so um things that most people can uh, just in a general consensus what people can expect to be bringing to um the table when you're you know offer or when you're good at getting qualified for a home loan is you're gonna be bringing two years of tax returns two years of w-2s okay. um if you're like contracted or self-employed 1099s and k-1s but we can get into that um you're going to be want they're good, the loan officer is going to want to source where your down payments coming from, mm -hmm. and they're also going to be wanting to take a credit uh, get a credit report to be able to determine what your qualifying credit score is. Correct. Nobody and nobody wants their credit pulled. Nobody. 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 Nobody wants their credit pulled. Don't touch my credit. Don't touch it. Like <laughs> leave it alone. Put it put it back in the closet. Yeah, yeah. Put the blanket on it. Leave it alone. But your credit report is made to be pulled. Otherwise. What, what is, is it, it there for? for? Yeah, you know, yeah. like it, it's just your financial number that basically says I'm able to be able to purchase things. Got it. Um, so you want to get all that. That's that. Those documents, like I said, the tax returns, W twos, pay stubs, bank statements. They're going to be verifying your assets, your income, mm -hmm. your past year's income, as well as your credit. Um, to be able to get a full picture of saying yes, you can go out there with confidence and say, you know, Dan or Jory. Jory said I can go get this house, Dan. We're we're going to put an offer in. So. Tax returns. Tax returns. W twos. Unless you're contracted and you're an independent 1099, which 1099. is 1099 for how long? You have to be. So when you're contracted and your and your income technically doesn't, it, it, if if your income fluctuates, whether it's commission, mm -hmm. your contracted work, your self employed buyer, mm -hmm. you're gonna need two years of tax returns. Two years. Okay. Yep. Twenty four months. Twenty four months no of tax worries. returns. Okay. Mm -hmm. So W twos or 1099s for two years. Mm -hmm. Tax returns. Bank statements. Bank, bank statements for about three months. That's two months. Two months. Mm -hmm. Two months. Mm -hmm. And then pay stubs, uh, pay stubs or stubs. or if you're contractor self employed, you know, pay pay stubs. And then, the, and then you guys will handle the credit report. One hundred percent. We just okay. pull credit and analyze it with the client on the phone. Now, what happens? Because I know I've had clients ask me this before, and they're always like, "Well, you know, I want to shop around. I want to I want to get the best option." Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about like that with you, because you are kind of like their source, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us more about that. In regards to like when a client's saying like we want to shop around, we want to get the best deal. So um, one thing positive, like I think that's an absolute amazing aspect that I get to do, or as as a loan officer, is I'm not just a direct lender. Mm -hmm. Like Wells Fargo um, and like the big banks, like I should say big banks, is because they're all direct lenders. You go to them, they give their money for your house, and they have their rates, their guidelines. Yeah. There's this. I'm a broker. So what that means is you come to me and I go shopping for you mm -hmm. through a wholesale channel. So nice. I, depending on what loan I get, that means I can kind of fit you to that certain lender. Right. Cool. Um, so when clients are going shopping and they're like, Hey, I'm shopping around, you really got to figure out like what they're shopping for. Is it the person that they're shopping for? Cause some people get really great rates, but the people on the other line are just awful. Yeah. Right. Um, but in other regards, they're looking for the absolute best rate. What is the PMI? What are my closing costs? Because other lenders have fees that yeah. we don't. Um, so every, you got to figure out what they're shopping for. And then that's kind of what I go through with them. I nine times out of 10, when I talk to somebody, they already have a worksheet that's been given to them from somebody else. Yeah. And I, and, nine times out of 10, the other loan officer hasn't gone through that worksheet. It's just kind of like, here you go, yeah. figure it out. They punched it in and the computer just spit out whatever it was. Yeah. And they don't even, they, you, the, the client's looking at it and they're like, I don't even know what my intangible doc stamps are. What are these? And, yeah. and you, so you explained them, you know, whatever. So, but you get those worksheets and you go through it with the individual and you say, okay, this, like the, your client that had the really good offer, you know, like, I'll tell you, this is a good offer that I cannot be. Yeah. You should probably go with, you know, obviously I'm a better such and such better loan officer but if you're looking for strict numbers this is better yeah um but that's what you do is like when you're going through the entire rigmarole going through the worksheets and they're shopping you want them to compare apples to apples and show them 
what they're actually getting when they're doing their mortgage. So you're basically giving them all the options and you're kind of showing them which would be the best route for them. So with you, technically they're shopping multiple different options, right? Yeah, 100%. So you're basically the one-stop shop is what I'm getting at is that like, instead of having to go to, you know, lender A and lender two and lender, you know, X, Y, Z, basically come to you and see what all the options are and, and lay it out. And that's kind of what, I'm trying to lean towards with because I know I know a lot of clients ask me they're like well what if I you know what if I could get a better rate somewhere else I'm like okay well if you go with Jory you know and you look at it he will give you multiple options to kind of look at because a lot of things that people stress out about is most of the credit pull right mm -hmm. so they're gonna get their credit pulled at multiple different places which is crazy I mean with you they basically you know just one stop shop and go from get there pulled once yeah yeah so um, if you guys are thinking about that Tina says what's up by the way so she's what's watching up, as well um, <laughs> the whole team is basically jumping on here and Debbie why am I not a mentor on the Conway page. Um, I mean, I, I love the admins on the Conway page, to be quite honest. They do a phenomenal job. And we're actually going to be bringing on some local uh, some local uh, other agents, other brokers um, in the area for real estate. I'm not the only one out here. You know, we, you know, Derek was on here earlier. Brad's great. My fan's great. And there's multiple others I'm sure I'm missing. So um, we're going to take, you know, some other episodes and we're going to bring them on and see, you know, what their niches are and how they, how they do what they do as experts. So um, thank you, Debbie, for, for, for bringing that up. But, you know, I, I want to stress to people, the biggest thing is a lot of people tend to try to come to a realtor and they say, okay, I love this home. Let's go see it. So in this area, I can tell you personally that homes um, that are priced appropriately are selling as quickly as seven days. Mm -hmm. If that, that but if yeah. that, so when people come or clients and customers or, or friends and family come to me and they say something to the tune of like, Hey, I want to go check out this house. I'm like, okay, we can definitely go check that out. But if we love it and this is the home of our dreams, we need to be prepared. 100%. Because people tend to think it's like, um, okay, well, let's go see this house. And, you know, if, if God willing or if, if, if the timing's right, then it'll happen, right? But I've seen people devastated uh, because they didn't have their documents in order. They didn't have the pre approval. We couldn't put in the offer fast enough, or we put it in the day after when it went pending. Right? Yep. Or okay. maybe a client will text me afterwards saying, like, oh my gosh, that house went pending. So I urge you guys, the biggest thing is getting pre approved. And I know the jury can vouch by that too. So 100%. So one thing that you guys do, which is great, is there's a difference between pre approval and, and pre-qualified yeah there's a big yeah, big big difference so what's what's the difference all right so it, the terms are interchangeable but i say pre-approval is basically or i basically just say pre-approval is when you to if you send me your documents i review them my knowledge as a loan officer says yes this person could qualify right everything i've looked at your credit score your, your income your assets everything that we've talked about you qualify but then there's pre-qualified yeah right so so what we do as a brokerage is I have the option, what's called TBD scenarios, right? Okay. So I, it's like a three-step process. It doesn't take long at all. It honestly takes as long as other people doing pre-approvals. So what we do is we take all your documents, I review it, I send it to us, I send it to my loan partner, he reviews it, and then my loan partner sends it into what's called a TBD scenario okay. where it goes and gets reviewed by an underwriter. Nice. The underwriter reviews the entire, do everything that we send in and says, if this was a file that we had, these would be the conditions. Nice. So then we send that back to you. You put in your offer. We call the listing agent and we say, hey, listen, you know, John Smith with Dan Rojas on your $400,000 house. Yeah, he's, he's pre-qualified. But let me tell you how he's been pre-qualified. I've gotten all these documents and underwriters already reviewed it. A, B, C, and D, this is what we would need to close a loan. And, and I'll tell you as a listing agent, that is super valuable of how you're going to decide, you know, and, and assist your seller in picking the right offer, right? Yeah. So that's that's actually how we had reconvened too, was the fact yes, that it was. I had a listing in, in the Conway area on a lakefront, uh, lakefront property. And um, Brad Young actually had submitted the offer yep. with you guys. And it was funny because you had seen my name and you're like, wait, Dan Rojas? And yep. so like, you gave me a call and um, you helped my seller under understand that you you know Brad's buyer was super ready to go mm -hmm. was that um, you were like listen there's not gonna be anything to be scared of and this is why and let me show you a few more things and, and it, it, it basically put my seller at ease because my seller you know she, she was a little concerned in general her house had been on the market before me mm -hmm. um, for quite some time and then you know we had some offers but when your offer came in and you verified that with me I said listen these are the reasons why we need to not be so worried or concerned it put her at ease and so that's when she was like let's do it let's go ahead and knock it out 100 man so that that's the difference between um the pre-approval and the pre-qual pre-qualifying and that's that's so important to be able to have that in hand because it might help you stand out against other offers as well because think about it if there's other offers on the table exactly the same loan type exactly the same stipulations as far as 
purchase price or concessions or um, anything else, um, that could make the world of a difference yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, who's the team that you're working with? That's what it comes down to. I, yeah, you know. and, I, and I love that, especially with you, because you're very personable when it comes to that. You're not, you're not scared to go ahead and call the listing agent and be like, hey, listen, this is my client. This is why we need to go this route. Or this is my client. This is how they're set up. And you know this, that they would be great to go ahead and work with. And I, I love that about you because you're not willing to to hold back for your clients. You're willing to go ahead and get it done, make the calls, and com help convince along the process to do it. So, on that note, once we're under contract, let's talk a little bit more about that process. So yeah. tell me, tell me the day that we're under contract, what happens in the next you know thirty days? Yeah. So uh, once the client gets under contract, obviously we say our congratulatory phone call, right? Yeah. Hey, guess what? Congratulations, you got yeah. a contract. Congrats, call. you got a fat bill. <laughs> yeah. Congrats, congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to home ownership. Yeah. Um, so once the once we get under contract, that's when we say the congratulations. We call all parties and introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. But um, it, then it's time for the work for the client because we have the documentation. We've got that pre-qualification. Mm -hmm. We kind of already know where we're going to be at, right? Correct. So we take – at that point, we have all the documentation. We submit the file into what's called disclosures. Okay. The disclosures go out to the client. We review the disclosures with the client. And mm -hmm. the client at this point has an understanding of what their cash to close will be, mm -hmm. when their closing date's going to be, a very close idea of what their rate should be because rates change every day. Yeah. But they will have a very good knowledge of what is going on in the beginning. So we take that time in the very beginning – when disclosures are going through is to set expectations. Mm -hmm. Hey, by after you're done with inspection period with your real estate agent, we're going to want to order the appraisal. This is what it looks like with all of the options of the appraisal. Mm -hmm. Once appraisal comes back, you'll have by that time, you'll have your conditional approval. We're going to review the conditions like we have already. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go ahead, get those documents and submit it for the final approval. And once the final approval comes through, that's when we start working on your final cash to close numbers with the title company. And by this time, Every time, a, what we call milestones, right? Big milestones are you the disclosures, your appraisal order, yeah. your appraisal back, your underwriting. Every milestone is a phone call, an email, and a text message to not only a client, but also the real estate agents. Yeah. Um, and everybody included, title company too. But the client, the whole point of this is the, the constant contact with them is for not for for the most people 99% of people are not buying houses every quarter no. like investors so this is a even if you've bought a house before it's a brand new process because you're rarely ever doing it yeah. and so the constant contact and the the every milestone every hey what's going on hey how are you it, you know you have any questions it allows them to be set at ease, be like, man, these guys got it. Like, you know, my realtor is in constant contact with them. I'm in constant contact with my loan officer. I know that they already sub my, submitted my stuff to underwriting. So from disclosures, you order, the, you get your inspection done. Yeah. <laughs> um, you order your, you order your appraisal. Your file's been sent into underwriting by this point in time. You get both the appraisal and underwrit the underwritten file again back. You get those documentation that's needed. You submit it, the appraisal, and, and we submit the appraisal. They get the clear to close. You set up for closing. Final cash numbers come out. We review all of that together, make sure the numbers are right. Yep, very important. And then you go, you go to closing. You become a homeowner. Yep. Yeah. So during that process, there's a lot of do's and don'ts. More so don'ts. More so right? don'ts. Yeah. So I, I always like to tell this story, and uh, my my friend, my now friend Charlie, um, will now vouch for this story. So I had a I had a friend very dear to my heart, and I love his family to death. Um, there's a lot of don'ts uh, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to do while you're under contract. So, Jerry, give me an example of one don't you're supposed to do. Uh, don't do. don't have your credit pulled. Okay, so don't have your credit pulled, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's a good one. So opening up a credit card would not be a good idea. No. Okay. Not, not at all. So that's check mark number one for my friend. Yeah. Um, what else? What's one other thing you should not do? Don't move money around. Okay, so don't move money around. He didn't. He moved money around, but it was in uh, in a different form, and I'll explain that in a second. So don't move too many large amount like amounts of money around. Right, mm -hmm. it looks suspicious to the lender, yep. and they're like red flag, red flag. What's going on? Where's this going? Where's where's it coming, coming from? from? Yeah. 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 Okay, so give me another big don't. Don't quit your job. Do not quit your job. My client did not do that, thank God. But I, <laughs> no, but ironically enough, this morning I woke up, sure enough, saw one of my colleagues, that was her status this morning. She goes, so my client went and told me this morning that she quit and we're two weeks from closing. Yeah. I don't know how how my colleague is gonna fix that. Um, and she's uh, extremely good at what she does. I mean, she sold 15 million last year in volume. Yeah. I just don't know how she's gonna fix that. It's, hap it's happened to me before, man. I literally, I've gotten the final closing disclosure and they do the final verification of employment right before closing yeah. and they came back negative. And I called my client like, hey, uh, we talked about this in the beginning. What's going on? And she's like, "Oh, well, I'm moving across the state, so I just thought I'd pick up another job over there." No, I'm like, "No, go. 
No, you can't. Yeah, you can't. So. Yeah, you got to stay working until we close. Then you, then, then you can move. Then you on. do what you want. So, uh, give me another don't. Another thing you shouldn't do or shouldn't buy. A, a boat. You shouldn't buy a boat. A boat, a yeah. boat is a good one. Yes. Then yeah, my client should. did that. Check. Yeah. Right <laughs> he, uh, he bought a jet ski, um, and I love him to death for it. But yes, do not buy a boat. Do not buy a jet ski. What's another uh, thing that you probably shouldn't buy? Oh man, there's furniture, cars. Um, furniture and cars are the big ones. Yeah, the, yeah, those are the biggest things because nine times out of ten, furniture is the biggest one. Yeah, furniture is the biggest one. So a lot of folks tend to want to buy furniture on their credit card mm -hmm. right before they go to close because they're like, you know, we're buying a new house, we want to get it furnished. The biggest thing that I want to stress to everybody is that you guys should not be moving money around in that format and it's just because of the fact that it's a red flag to the lender right yeah 100 so, so for you guys it's it's considered what poor spending habits right it's it's just poor spending habits but on top of that like when you're moving money around it's when it's the big it's just the best way to describe it is the lender wants all tabs on where money is going and coming from yeah they no no cash no chain no exchanges like there was i had a client about two years ago that had a um $35,000 cash deposit. And I was, I looked at it before I, you know, pre-approved him and did the whole thing. I was like, what is this from? And he's like, Oh, I sold a, I sold a classic uh, Mustang. I was like, wow, wow, sweet. Number one, but number two, would you have a bill of sale? No, no. Oh, Jesus. can't use it. Can't use it. Can't use the money. Yeah. I mean, he had, he had a copy. He showed me like pictures of the deed and all of this. And I was like, you can't use it, man. Sorry. But, um, yeah, sorry about that. So no, but that makes a lot of sense because I mean, uh, he didn't have a bill of sale, so you couldn't source the funds. Is basically what it is. hundred percent. So one of the big things that I've discovered too is that you guys got to be able to source where these are, and that even includes what gifts too, right? Gifts. Yeah. So you got to source what account it came from, who it came from, if it's been sitting there for a while, or if it just appeared as well. Yeah, yeah, and it depends on the, the loan program. So this is actually kind of one of the things that, um, depending on you know, with with the conventional, what you can get, what you can do is uh, if you're getting a gift for conventional. Mm -hmm. uh, the donor can write a gift letter and yeah. it just basically gives all the information. And I'm not, I don't want any of this. I don't want any of the money back. This is strictly a gift. Yeah. And the donor will then send the money directly to title at closing. There's no, what they do at that point is they verify it, but they verify the lender verifies it with title that it came from the bank account of the donor and that it was from the donor themselves. Yeah. Whereas FHA, when you get involved with FHA, any FHA client, that gets a gift they want to verify the bank account that it came in by the donor's bank statements to verify that they have the ability to give yeah because sometimes they might not yeah so like you can't you know hypothetically you know dan you're my donor um i have 20 grand cash i can't give you 20 grand cash and then you give me the 20 grand back in a right gift back. right yeah. Yeah, well, also, you can't pull a cash advance on a credit card to do that. You either. can't. No, you can't do that. You cannot do that. No, but that's some of the stuff that you guys should look out for because I know people tend to get creative and they want to see what they can, you know, everybody wants to buy a home. So of course. some people, you know, want to skirt by it. If you feel, if any of you feel ever that you guys want to do something to, to better your chances of, of getting a home, run it by your lender first. Run it by Dory. Run it by whoever you're working with um, because before you make any poor moves, Mm -hmm. It's better to find out whether you should make that poor move or not. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, use use your lender or your realtor as a, as Google. That's yeah. the best way. I mean, ask the questions before you make the action because do not actually Google it. <laughs> no, do, do not Google it. Do not Google it. Just ask your ask your professional because like yeah. when, when you you can't once you make an action and then you ask the questions, it's almost you you can't come back from it. No, but you ask can't. you ask the questions. They'll tell you the right answers hopefully, and uh, and then you can move on from there. So that's huge. It is not Googling Google. It. And the reason is use your, like Jory said, use your realtor and your lender as Google. And the reason I stress that is because some of you may be watching this from California right now. Mm -hmm. Some of you may be watching this in New York and Texas. And what happens per state? The laws are different. Change. Everything, it changes. Even lending changes. Mm -hmm. um, the real estate laws change. Everything changes. So make sure that you're using your professional because you could be, and you know, one thing could be okay in Texas, but not okay in Florida. Awesome. And I've seen that happen before where clients have come to me and said, hey, well, this was fine when I did it in Illinois. This is Florida. It's a yeah. little bit different. So, um, listen, man, this this has been fantastic, and I'm so excited. So, for those of you that are watching now, maybe catching us towards the end of this, I actually want to let you guys know that we're going to be doing the Mortgage Factor every third Wednesday 
of the month, um, unless you know some emergency comes up or something comes up in our schedule. But we're going to be doing this every third Wednesday, and pretty soon we'll we'll, we'll have a number rolling across the bottom here um, to kind of give you guys the opportunity to call in with questions as well, because mm -hmm. now we have the capability to take calls. So um, on the next on the next segment in about three weeks uh, from now, we'll actually be taking calls and we'll announce it in advance. We'll let you guys know. We'll have the admins of all the pages to see if that's okay, and um, we'll have you guys call in with your questions so that way we can answer them for your concerns, anything like that. Uh, but right now we're going to jump into our rapid fire segment and get to draw no, no jury a little bit more. So whew. here we go. All right. So rapid fire. What's your favorite trilogy? Oh, Lord of the Rings. Oh, hands, hands down. I, I, I could have. I, I saw you more as like a Jurassic Park kind of guy. I love Jurassic Park. Um, you know, in my in my spare time, I do act like run around my house acting as a Velociraptor. Okay. But uh, <laughs> but no, cool. Lord of the Rings, man. I mean, I just for whatever reason, I just. I love that trilogy. That's amazing. So, um, all right. So let's, uh, who's your favorite athlete of all time? Athlete of all time. Um, I really, when I used to play, I, I played really competitive soccer when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. And I loved, loved, and I still admire the guy, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. He was the beast. man. He's, He's an animal. He's still a beast. He's still an animal. Dude, I don't know. That man is like molded for soccer. Basically. Uh, it's, it's remarkable. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's insane, but he is phenomenal. Uh, tell me a, a cool local event um, that either you attended this past year or that you're looking forward to this year. It doesn't have to be real estate related. Something neat, even as little as a like uh, local farmer's market. What's something cool that you've either been to in the last year here in Central Florida or you're going to attend this year? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, every year I do go to – it's what's called Taste of Oviedo. Okay. Um, so I've been to that – year after year and we've and i've actually helped sponsor a couple of times but the reason why i like it is because i've uh moving down from michigan when i was like 10 years old mm -hmm. the first time i ever went it was not that big and that was probably around like 2003 okay and now we're 16 years later and it's like a full event there's jump houses there's i mean there's it's remarkable so, so taste of Oviedo. what uh what time of the year is that normally i think it's in I think it's coming up, man. I think it's in February or March. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's coming up soon. Nice. So Taste of Oviedo. And then for the last one, um, I asked this question last year to uh, the Conway community, and I'm going to ask you it now. So if you had the choice between having a pet unicorn or a pet velociraptor, which would it be? In oh, life? velociraptor, hands down. And it would be because? Yeah. Well, because I want to be one. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, velociraptor, hands down, because I think if, if you put like, if you put a unicorn on like a, a, a leash, it's like, oh, wow, that's a unicorn. But yeah. if you have a velociraptor on a leash yeah. or just like, you know, riding it, like mounting it like a like a horse, I still think it's it's, it's uber cool. There's no way that there's I think the velociraptor hands it out. I think you're going to get a lot of HOA violations with the velociraptor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess if you pick up after it. Right. But I mean, you need a shovel. So. Oh, Lord. Well, Jory, this is a lot of fun. Thank you for being on the show with me today. And uh, for those of you out there, if you are curious um, or if you want Jory's information, um, I didn't put it on here because, again, we're doing no branding. But just reach out to me on my Facebook page or reach out to Jory. I'll tag him on this afterwards. And that way you guys can kind of like follow up with him and maybe ask him some more questions that you didn't want to ask on the show. Um, I appreciate you being here, man. This has been a lot of fun. Of course, and man. I'm excited to continue doing this and giving the people a lot of feedback and a lot of fire content. Um, and yeah, cool, man. Well, thank you guys. And we host this show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. It's real estate related, but centrally located. Um, and we do absolutely no, no branding, just fire content all the time. Um, we're going to be doing some giveaways too. So if you guys are watching right now, and I want you guys to go ahead and uh, share this video if you can. And if you do share this video, send me a screenshot to my Facebook page and we'll actually give you either a free vacation stay to Vegas, mm -hmm. Gatlinburg, Williamsburg, or Mexico. We've got Cancun, Acapulco, um, and a few other locations. So if you're watching still, or if you're just watching this again, you can you know whenever, or if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, um, find this Facebook page. If you're um, if you're actually going to be on Spotify or podcast, uh, Apple Podcasts, you mm -hmm. can actually give us a review. As long as you screenshot it and send it to me, I will send you a vacation stay for free that'll save you a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars. So yep. thanks again, folks, and we will see you next week. All right. Take care, guys.